Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on main and interaction effects in ANOVA using SPSS. Oftentimes in counseling research, we gather multiple independent variables and we study the effects those independent variables had on a dependent variable. And we look for any difference that may be evident with one independent variable as it relates to a dependent variable, but also combinations of independent variables. If we're just looking at the effect of one independent variable, we call that a main effect. And if we're looking at multiple independent variables, the effect that multiple independent variables have on a dependent variable, that's called an interaction effect. And in some cases, we are not going to observe statistically significant main effects, but there would be a statistically significant interaction effect. So I have fictitious data loaded in SPSS. I have an ID variable. I have two independent variables. One is program, and there are three levels to this independent variable, individual, group, and treatment as usual. And then I have an independent variable, gender, and there are two levels to this independent variable, male and female. And then I have a scale variable. This is a dependent variable named symptoms. And let's just assume these are mental health symptoms and that a higher score represents more severe symptoms and a lower score represents less severe symptoms. So when a research study has been constructed in this manner, we have two independent variables. We could look at just one independent variable at a time. For example, we could look at program and symptoms. And because we have three levels of the program variable, we'd have to use ANOVA here. For gender, we could just use a t-test because we have just two levels of independent variable. And again, we could just look at gender and symptoms. But what we would lose by not loading all the variables into one ANOVA would be the possibility of discovering and evaluating an interaction effect. So before I run this ANOVA, there are assumptions to ANOVA, and I cover the assumptions in other videos. So I'm just going to proceed with this ANOVA as if the assumptions for ANOVA were satisfied. So I'm going to go to Analyze and then General Linear Model, Univariate. And this is what the Univariate ANOVA dialog looks like by default. I'm going to move Symptoms into the Dependent Variable text box. And then both Program and Gender into the Fixed Factor list box because they are the independent variables. Under Plots, I'm going to move Program into the horizontal axis and Gender into separate lines. And make sure when you load these to press Add. So it's Program times Gender interaction here. Continue. For post hoc, we would use this in the case where we had a statistically significant result for Program. Gender would not uh, use a post hoc test because there's only two levels. So program, I'll move over uh, to post hoc test for list box and I'll click on the two key test. Click continue. Then under options, I want to display the means for overall program gender, program times gender. I want to compare main effects. Check that off. Then descriptive statistics, estimates of effect size, and homogeneity tests. And then click Continue. And now we're ready to conduct the ANOVA, so I'll click OK. And we have the results here. So we can see that we have three levels for the program independent variable, and we have an equal sample size for each, and two levels for gender. There are 24 males and 21 males in the study. And then moving down to descriptive statistics, we can see we have the mean scores broken down by both independent variables. And right away we can see that the group combined with male, that seems to be a lower score at 41, and the group total at 44 is a bit lower. Moving down to Levine's test, and again I'm going to assume that in this case all the assumptions for ANOVA are met, but you can see we have a non-statistically significant result for Levine's, so we would assume homogeneity of variance in this case. So we would fail to reject the null hypothesis here. 
Then moving down to the tests of between subjects effects. And we can see here that we're going to evaluate the p-value first, significance. And we can see that program has a p-value of 0 0.059. That is not statistically significant with an alpha of 0 0.05. And similarly, gender has a p-value of 0 0.097. Again, not statistically significant. However, if we take program times gender, the interaction between the program variable and the gender variable, we do have a statistically significant result. 0 0.011 is below 0 0.05. So moving down, we can see that we had pairwise comparisons run as part of our analysis, but we won't use them because there was no statistically significant difference in the program variable. And then moving down the output of most interest here would be program times gender because this is where we had the statistically significant finding. So one thing we could do is we could double click in this table and we could highlight the independent variables and the mean scores and just insert a bar graph. And we can see right away that the group level of the independent variable program and the male level of the independent variable gender has a lower score. Where the other scores are fairly close to one another, that particular score is lower. That's the interaction effect that we observed in the ANOVA table in the test of between subjects effects. So again, here we have the Tukey test, but we're not going to interpret this, this post hoc test, because there is no statistically significant difference there in program. So we're going to move down and interpret the profile plot. And you can see here each line represents scores from one of the genders, and the horizontal axis represents the levels of the independent variable program. So if you look at, for example, the scores for the female participants, from individual to group to treatment as usual, they're fairly close together. And similarly, for the male participants, you can see that for individual and treatment as usual, the scores are pretty close together. But for males, in the group level of the independent variable program, the score is low. So again, that's indicating the interaction effect. So if we had analyzed these variables separately, instead of them putting them into an ANOVA together, we would have missed the interaction effect between the group level of the program variable and the male level of the gender variable. So this is an example of when we have an interaction effect, but we do not have main effects for the independent variables that we're studying. So we only have the interaction effect here. And this really highlights the value of ANOVA as a statistical test because it can detect interaction effects when multiple independent variables are studied at the same time. I hope you found this video on main and interaction effects in ANOVA using SPSS to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.